So can you share with us something that you've heard people say about abstract art? Oh. Usually they come and say, um, I don't get it. What is this? You know, is this art? And yeah, the thing I've said, and I, and I tell them, you don't have to get it. It might not be art. And you don't have to like it. My name is Clarence Chan. I'm a Filipino American and I am a painter. Uh, my dad is Chinese Filipino. He was Ch he's full Chinese, but he's born, born here. And my mother is, I, she's everything. I mean, she's, Fili she's Filipina and European and among other things. And so, but she was also born in Tacloban. I always drew. You know, the funny thing is that there's certain things that you do so much that you take for granted. Right? I've always liked Legos, I've always drew, I've always... Uh, I, I remember going to Ateneo uh, in uh, grade school and you know before you have those brand new notebooks, those so pristine looking notebooks, they're so fluffy, those line uh, notebooks. And I love them, that's the first part I love about going to school was that notebook. I always wanted that, that pad of paper. And I would draw, the first thing I would do is draw on them. For the most part, I just want them to experience the work, not go, not go beyond anywhere else. Just look at the work for what it is. Because when you go to a museum or you go to a gallery, most of the, for the most part, the artist is not there. So what I do, I just tell them to look at it, to experience the work. And then afterwards, they can ask me a question or two, and what is this and what is that? And sometimes I don't know what it is either. You know, I, it's just maybe a, just a, a blob or, or a stripe or something like that. Well, there's a lot of video games in it. Um, I play a lot of video games. And so that comes into play quite a bit. Um, the use of line, the use of speed, um, the use of certain parts of it. There, there are parts in there that are part of comic books or things that I read, things that I experience each day that I just dot, jot notes. You saw my notebook, right? I jot notes down or sometimes I put images in there or sometimes I put a drawing of something that I saw. And so uh, sometimes that goes into the work. Maybe not now, maybe later, things like that. So I like the fact that my concept changes with me as I experience life at its normal speed. Skate culture and surf culture goes hand in hand, right? And so I've always loved the ocean. I don't know why, even as a kid, growing up in Tacloban, uh, I was always, my grandmother's house was by the sea. So I've always was around, the was around water. And then even in Houston, when I moved there, we were close to the coast. And then when I moved to New York, it's, it's, it's an island also, technically, my hand is an island surrounded by water. And so then when I moved to Hawaii, it's when I, spe I, I figured that my sister gave me a studio in the back of her house. And so I can just paint. She just says, just paint. And so what I did for most of the week, I go to the beach and I draw and I drew and read and drew and read and drew and read. I just try, try to absorb what I experience, the place that I'm in, things that I read, uh, music that I hear. I mean, life is fluid, right? I mean, we're constantly moving. Everything is in flux. Like, I've always liked the, the feeling of being in the, in the ocean and when the waves hit you, you're moving, but the earth is standing still. And so the horizontal line shifts. And so I'm, it, I like that feeling constantly in flux. When, when I was younger, a lot of people thought my paintings were very cold because of the surface. There's no hand, you can't see the hand, right? It's, it, it's very smooth, flat, super flat. And, and so for me, titling it with a certain maybe romanticism to it, maybe warms, the, I, I, in my head, maybe warms the painting up a bit, or maybe a little more approachable. When I was younger, I thought if I closed my eyes and covered my ear that I would be smarter for a test. So every time I take a test, I would come and close my eyes. And so I, I, I feel like I would get smarter. I have large headphones, right, when I paint. 
and majority of the time, there's no music. I still have that stigma where if I cover my ears and close my eyes, I'll get smarter. So I can concentrate more. Like magic power? Yeah, weird, huh? <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, actually. <laughs> I think I think I'm I'm technically covering the rest of my all my other senses and then making my eyes and my mind more clear for the, for the work. I think it's kind of like that, yeah. Because sometimes Kelly asks me, "What are you What are you listening to?" Nothing. And she goes, "You won't tell me." No, I'm really listening to nothing. <laughs> Well, whenever I make a large painting or even a small painting, I always put like um, small images in there or I, I three dimensional, but very small. In a sense, I've always as a kid or even now, when I look at work, I like to be rewarded when I look up close. And so for me to make making micro imagery or, or small things within the painting, I'd like to reward a viewer that goes up close to the work and sees the surface and, and sees something else. Within, within the picture plane. And so I, I like the, I, making small things makes the viewer go close to the painting and then move back. And then as they look at the rest of the big painting, they have to move close and then move back. Because I wonder, I've always wanted to come back because I, I only spend like, you know, even if you go on vacation, it's only two, three weeks at a time, right? So it was, it was a time to come back and maybe like get to know my roots again. Because, you know, when you start living in the U.S., I mean, technically, you be, uh, since you're a kid, you're you're an American. You have that you have that you have that sensibility. You have that attitude and things like that. And I, and and I've always wanted to come back to see, you know, to get to know my, more of my Filipino side. The art scene here is vibrant. I mean, and it's very young, and for the most part, very accepting of. Uh, of new artists and things like that and just kind very supportive i mean i actually delayed my move to manila by by at least 11 months because i i just met kelly so i didn't want to leave but with, when we were together six months i asked her if she she wanted to move to manila and to my surprise she said yes i think the growth of my work by moving here painting 24 7 but also having Kelly by my side has, has made my work uh, progress exponentially. Because I can bounce things, I can bounce ideas off her, and there's not many people that you can do that with, especially uh, my soon-to-be beautiful wife. I'm Kelly Mayashiro. I'm a painter and installation artist, and I've known Clarence for over seven years. Really good at talking about work and also looking at art. I think as a resource here in Manila, he's been a great resource to a lot of artists on how to even, from how to paint to how to look at art. I think that's a really major asset here because his education kind of lends to that sort of uh, ability. He's also a former professor that I think that actually really helps with that. Still a continuation in Hawaii because I stayed, right? So I still continued um, my work from Artists of Hawaii. Technically, it's the same series going over, except there are certain parts where instead of waves, I, I, I wanted a feeling of floating, floating within a body of water, things like that, and with certain types of imagery that, I've, that, that, I, that I see around Hawaiian surf shops, skateboard shops, um, patterns, on the beach, people wearing whatever, things like that. So, music that I music that I was listening to. Yeah, when I made the drawing, I, w I went back home and I went to Waimea Bay. It's it's where the um, it's one of the biggest surf spot, big wave surfing uh, in Hawaii. It's in the North Shore, and it's in a bay. And in the winter time, the waves can go up to 50 feet, 50 to 50 feet. And so, but what I liked about it was that when you walk around along the shores of the bay, on the beach, you can technically follow a wave in by on foot. If you walk fast enough, you kind of find a follow wave in. And so I wanted the work to be 30 feet. And so when a person looks at the work from the, from the, from the, the beginning, you can actually walk and follow the wave going all 30 feet. And I wanted the concept to be continuous. 
it was really hard because uh, when I made that piece, it's more like yearning or I was missing Hawaii. I haven't been home in like maybe a couple of years. Uh, my sister was having health problems, and my sis and Kelly was out of, or was in New York for residency, and so I was all alone. And so I kept like thinking about what I what I missed, what I'm yearning. I don't, I feel the same. Not that the work is the same. I think the work has progressed considerably, actually, especially since I've been in Manila. It's progressed quite a bit, leaps and bounds, technically. But I, I, I think I've matured um, as a person, as an artist. Um, I've become more responsible human being, but yeah. You know, like I don't play games all day anymore kind of thing. And uh, I tend to, yeah, kind of sucks being an adult. I mean, I see a lot of young artists who, who are given shows right away and things like that. And they think it's always going to be that way. And that's not necessarily true. You know, it's still a business, right? And, and, I, I, and I got that younger. And then when I didn't get that, I realized that, yeah, this, this doesn't, so it doesn't come very often. So when I do have opportunities now, I'm really grateful for it because, you know, I. I love what I do, and I want to keep. I want to keep doing it. The name of the game right now is just, is sustainability, just to sustain what I'm doing. I don't. I, you know, what the, the the funny thing is, that like everyone everyone asks me that like, when I went to New York, do you want I do I want to be an art star or do I want you know do, everyone, all my classmates they, that's the goal, right? That's the dream and things like that. But it's never been a dream for me. I I just want to become a better painter each day, just become better and better and better, and. Um, and whatever happens, happens. Well, it's molded to the person that I am today. I mean, because it's, 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 it's made me travel. It's made me live in different places. And I, you know, for someone that's technically have lived in like five different cities, gone to different schools and things like that, experienced different people, different cultures. And that's what art has given me. It's given me an education, a great education in life, you know, um, yeah, I mean, it's everything.